Welcome back to my channel. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I know I did. We actually started our unit on periodic trends. And as I do with every unit, I started with a phenomenon, of course. But I thought I'd show you just some small changes that I've made this year whenever I incorporate phenomenon. So the first thing is, this is the first time, and actually if you came to see my presentation at the New Jersey Science Convention, you were actually one of the first to get one of these. So um, hopefully you're still using it. <laughs> oh, and if you attended my webinar for the AACT, I think I also included a copy of this in the shared folder of that um, webinar. But anyway, um, so this is something that I've given my students this year to help my students construct, I guess, better models. And so basically on this card, it gives them some ideas for things to include. Like, for example, they should be including the observable, the unobservable. They should include um, information on labels, like some people should be able to look at a model and be able to determine what is it a model of. Sometimes um, using a sequence of events can be really helpful, too a zoom in bubble right to to illustrate the particulate so uh, whenever my students are creating any kind of models i have them keep this out with them so that they're able to um, use this as they create and also if they have tests or quizzes i will allow them to use it to create their models too in the long run it just helps you it makes it so much easier to grade so i really like that in this unit and i have talked about this before um, this is a, um, a scaffolded worksheet that I use whenever I start my unit on periodic trends. And this sheet I actually use throughout the entire unit. So I collect it and then I return it to them and then I collect it again. So every time they revise their explanation, I collect it. So um, you can see on the top it is scaffolded. You've got places for the Bohr models. You also have a place for the students to um, write observations of the reactions. Uh, questions and then write their explanation. So I don't know if I mentioned, but the um, phenomenon for periodic trends was the alkali metals in water. And so that's what the Bohr models are for. So they have it for lithium, sodium, and potassium. And like I said, the rest of this is just what questions do you have or ask any questions and then record your observations and explain. But this year, instead, what I opt to do, instead of having the students just explain on their own, I decided to kind of I wanted, for two reasons, I wanted to make it a little bit more like student friendly because I feel like when the kids look at something like this, it's like, whoa, there's like a lot going on. So I wanted the kids to be able to work together. I wanted to make it a little bit more student friendly. And I also thought it would be cool if the kids could videotape themselves and hear themselves speaking about the content. And also it would help me to see what misconceptions they have if I can overhear them speaking about the content. Because when I'm doing this stuff in the classroom, I can't be everywhere at once. So it can get kind of tough. Um, so I had the students record a Flipgrid video. So Flipgrid is a very, very cool program. Basically, um, it's kind of like a discussion board, I guess, but it's different in that it's like a video so like of discussion. So uh, the students all can post little video clips. You can pick the time that they're allowed to record for. Um, they snap a selfie. Um, and basically the students are able to respond to each other via um, video. And so it's, it's really neat. I, I think it's really cool and the students enjoyed it. They really had a good time recording their videos. Now the plan is to basically allow the students to accrue more content knowledge. So they have their baseline phenomenon, their, um, their baseline explanation. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about Columbic Attraction. And based off of what they learn about Columbic Attraction, then what they're gonna do is revise their explanation. And then we'll talk about Columbic Attraction, effective nuclear charge, and ionization energy, and then revise their explanation again. So the plan is for them to be able to see how has their explanation changed as the unit has progressed. As it so happens, I also did this same exact phenomenon with my CP students. And so I thought it'd be helpful for you to see the difference between a college prep phenomenon and then a um, honors phenomenon. And there isn't really all that different. So I did the same exact phenomenon. The only difference is, like I said, this is the honors one and this is the CP one. And so in the CP one, instead of giving them just more sections to like write stuff down, what I decided to do was give them more like guiding questions. So for example, I asked the students in what group are these metals located in? You know, what are the structural features that are similar? Like what patterns do you notice? So by being able to give them some more information about like what's going on in the atom and 
like somehow draw a conclusion between the patterns that you see and the phenomenon, it will ultimately help them be able to construct a more authentic, you know, explanation. And I think um, this year, after doing some of that and making some modifications, I feel like their explanations this year have been better than ever before. So I definitely hope to continue that. You know, the honors students, I think a lot of them already have, they come into the class with some baseline knowledge of a lot of this. Like they know about the octet rule and um, they know about elements in, in columns have similar properties. And so, um, for them, I didn't really feel like it was that appropriate. So with that said, I am curious, do you have any phenomenon that you use with your students for your unit on periodic trends? I do like the phenomenon of the alkali metals in water, but I don't love it. And the reason why is mostly because I just, I don't know, it's not as authentic and real for them. I mean, you're not going to go outside and find a piece of sodium in your driveway. So I'd be curious if you have any suggestions or things that you use in terms of phenomenon for periodic trends, put it in the comments box. I'd love to know what you use. Like I said, I hope you had a wonderful week with your students, and I will check in with you next week.